Hey you guys, welcome to my January 10th DVD update. I'm going to talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the past, I think, probably month or so. And, you know, I'm doing this in a new setting. I'm going to do it in the DVD room as well still, but I feel like I can get better lighting out here without, like, all the shadows and, and you can see everything a little bit better. And I could, you know, I'm doing this in, like, an area where I can interchange, like, the posters and stuff too. Anyway, though, I didn't get a whole ton of stuff in the last month. I don't feel like a ton of... There was like that much that came out. I was going to get a few things today and then Best Buy, it said they had them in the store and then they didn't put them out. It was like Shallow How and a couple other ones, but I don't know what happened. Like they didn't put them out or anything. Um, the first one I got is a comedy movie called Pool Boys. And you know, it's, I thought I thought it was it was decent. It wasn't like an amazing movie. It was, it's basically Matthew Lillard and you know, his, I think it's his cousin just graduated from college. And the cousin was basically going to be going to a internship in Washington. It didn't work out. So then he ends up going to California because his cousin, Matthew Lillard's character, he basically is under the impression that he has this great job and all this money and everything. When the truth is he's a pool boy and he's basically lied to the whole family. So the cousin has to, try, you know, he goes out there originally to work with him because he needs to have uh, work something has to have a job during the summer in hopes of getting into Harvard. So basically when he gets out there, it turns out that he's a pool guy, so he ends up having to do the pool boy job with him, and he doesn't know what to do because he needs to put a good job on the resume for you know to get into Harvard. So then they basically, Matthew Lear basically f comes up with this scheme to have parties have a party at one of his client's houses while he's away. So it's basically, they're not really a party, they have this like um, brothel out of the house and have prostitutes and stuff. I mean, it's funny. Tom Arnold is one of the funniest things in the movie. He's in it for like a couple different scenes and he was really funny. I've always liked Tom Arnold. And I like Matthew Lillard, but I, I think out of the whole movie, Tom Arnold to me was the funniest. I loved him in Carpool. And I don't know, I always liked Tom Arnold. The next one, this one wasn't very good. I really wanted to watch it. I think it's on Netflix, but I wanted, you know, I wanted to watch it on, on Blu-ray. And it was only, I think, like $10 at Walmart, a DVD and Blu-ray pack of it. On Amazon, it's like $26 or something new. You know, it's, it was all right. It's about these kids that, um, basically it opens with Dean Cain. And, I, you know, Dean Cain was really just trying to like phone this in, I think. Like, especially this one part where he's like, don't go over there. Just the way he was doing it was a little strange. But it's basically, it opens with him and his daughter's, like, screwing out this box. I think she, like, tries to throw it in the fire, and then, like, Dean Cain gets thrown against the wall, and all this crap happens. But then these kids are in college, and they see on the Internet, buy, on an eBay or something, buy this ghost. And the starting bid is like $10. And the kid's like to his friends, Oh, can you loan me some money so I can buy this ghost? So they, I don't know. They're, I don't know why he thinks there's a reason to buy a ghost. He's like, the box is pretty nice. So he ends up buying this ghost in this box. And the friends were all like, Oh, that's bullshit. But then he ends up, you know, the ghost basically is this like Irish woman from years ago. And, you know, she does wishes and stuff. You don't see her, really. You know, they just like, oh, I wish this would happen, or I wish for 50 bucks, my 50 bucks back, or something like that. Basically, then everyone starts dying off in the school, and it's basically anybody that gets in the way of the three people that bought the box. Yeah, it was all right. Uh, I don't know, wasn't, wasn't that amazing. The next one is Apollo 18. A lot of people said they really dislike this, and, you know, it's another found footage movie. You know, it's not real. Some people have said stuff like, oh, is it real? No, none of the found footage movies are real. If you look on IMBD, they're all, you know, actors. But, um, you know, this was about a, like a um, mission to, you know, the moon that was never, you know, NASA technically never admitted to because of what happened. So it's like these two astronauts that are on the moon collecting samples and the other one is up in the ship waiting to pick him up, you know, something like that. I don't know why he, I guess he was up there because he had to be there to bring the thing back in or something like that. But while they're down there, they start like noticing weird things happening and they just discover there's something weird with the rocks. And, you know, it, it's, it, I thought it was kind of creepy. It's, I will say though, it's not a movie that really matters on Blu-ray, you know, because it was shot, I think, it, I think they, they shot some of it on film or they might have, you know, aged it to look like film. I'm not sure exactly what they did, 
but a lot of it's like just like surveillance footage, but not like you know good surveillance. It's like old black and white, so it's not it's not one that you like a must see on Blu-ray. Most things nowadays that are new, you know, get them on Blu-ray. This it doesn't make a huge difference. And this one, I really like this out of the Final Destination movies. I you know I don't watch the first one too much because I'm always flying for films and stuff, and I get so freaked out. I already have a big fear of flying, so I really don't watch the first movie much. And you know I don't know, it just always creeps me out. But um, the out of the sequels, I like the third one the best, and then I, this one the best. I will say it doesn't include the really cool um, music video the one actor made. You know, the Miles Fisher, I think. Something like that. You know, it was like a spoof on Saved by the Bell. You should look that up if you haven't seen it. It was almost better than the movie. I do wish they would have put it on here. I don't know why they didn't. It, I mean, it was amazing. I watched it like a dozen times online. But in this one, you know, it's just more of the same stuff. They're on a, going on a, um, some kind of thing for work, like a seminar. And they're going across a bridge, and the one guy ends up seeing a vision of the bridge collapsing. So then he basically wakes up, and him and the people on the bus get off. You know, they don't go, you know, they get off the bus. And basically, they all start dying one by one. And Tony Todd's character tells them the only way to escape it is to kill someone. And I'm not ruining anything because they say that in the trailer. But the 3D in it, you know, the only way to get the 3D one, I do have a 3D TV. I don't buy many 3D things. But, you know, certain things like this, you know, is pretty cool in 3D. There is some pretty cool 3D sequences. You know, most of the time, though, the stuff that works the best in 3D is, is the CGI because they can animate it more. The best-looking 3D movies are usually cartoons because, like, you know, it's CG and you can do a whole lot more with it than you can with just regular video. But, you know, this is definitely one worth watching. I, you know... It, I saw it in theaters in non-3D and still liked it, so it's not like you don't have to see it only in 3D. The only place, though, to get this 3D version, if you want the 3D, is um, Best Buy. The next one I got is the Planet of the Apes, um, the new one. And, you know, me who doesn't love CGI, I didn't mind the CG in this. It worked. I, I don't know. I thought this was a well-done movie. Um, I don't have a whole ton to say about it because I've talked about it a lot lately in the best movies of 2011. But definitely, if you haven't seen this, I, I liked it. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the sequel. And, you know, I did the Tim Burton one that he made years ago that kind of got forgotten about, it wasn't horrible. I, I, I'd have to watch that one again. Now, another 3D one I got is Fright Night 3D. And I talk about this, too, in the best, I think the best movies, best horror movies of 2011. And, you know, I really like the first Fright Night. I don't think I've ever seen the Fright Night 2, but I don't know. I thought this one was pretty well done. Again, the 3D in this was good, especially when things were, the vampires would, like, like, like you know, catch fire and you'd see, like, little specks of things fly out. And that stuff worked pretty well. Um, I think this 3D, you can get this anywhere. I don't think it's only Best Buy. I'm not sure, though. Um... But, you know, it's a pretty much a direct remake, but there's aspects changed. The friend character that McLovin plays, you know, in this, you know, he, um, he in the original movie, was much more of a friend, and he was there a lot more. This, he kind of is there, and you don't see him for a while. So it's a little different, his character is played a little different than the original. But, you know, this is definitely a worth watching one. And then so this one I got because it was, I think, $7 at Best Buy. And I don't like the second. The second one, I mean, I, it's all right. I always like the first one, analyze this, analyze that. The pain with some of these, though, is it doesn't have all the features. But if you haven't seen these, it's Billy Crystal is a, like, therapist, and Robert De Niro plays, like, a mob guy who basically witnessed one of his old friends shot and basically has a breakdown and can't handle the business and he keeps losing his mind and freaking out and basically having panic attacks. So he goes to Billy Crystal and basically forces him to be his doctor and is basically invading his life and, you know, Billy Crystal's getting in the midst of getting married and things are getting, the marriage is getting, you know, getting married is getting screwed up because Robert De Niro's character keeps on having these breakdowns of panic attacks and has to keep seeing him. It's a fun movie. The sequel wasn't, wasn't amazing. This one is the one that I really like. 
called The Intruder. It starts off a little teeny bit slow in the beginning, but it really picks up after the first like 15 minutes. And it's about a market that basically it takes place all in a market. And there's an interesting documentary on here talking about how they got the market and how they got all the food from the throwaway food that Ralph's and the markets couldn't sell. That was very interesting. But um, in this, it's basically about a market that's getting ready to go out of business and be sold off. And, and you know, basically the employees are getting killed off one by one. I will say, if you haven't seen this before, don't watch the trailers for it if you really plan to watch it because the trailers pretty much ruin who the killer is. And, you know, they basically do way too many hints to who it is. I don't know why they cut it the way it is. They make it so obvious. Because if you watch this movie and you didn't see that trailer, you wouldn't know right away who the killer is. It would take you a little bit. When you see the trailer, you know from the very beginning. But this was... Um, the director, Scott Spiegel, I got his other movie, uh, Hostel 3, I'm going to show in a minute. But um, he's done a bunch of movies. And, you know, Sam Raimi is in this actually acting. Ted Raimi is in this. Um, Bruce Campbell has a small cameo in it. Um, they used to advertise it like he was one of the leads in it, but he only has a small part. This one I definitely recommend. And then one of the older titles I got, this was on sale, was Dodgeball. And, you know, this is a, just a fun movie. I... And Heavenly Creatures, Peter Jackson's, one of his earlier films. And it's Kate Winslet and Melanie Lewinsky. And they're basically these friends, and they like basically live in their own world. And it's a really well-done movie. And I got iRobot, because I think it was like $5 or something. And now onto the DVDs. Now this one, I, I watched it already through streaming a while ago. But I just got it at, um, I think, FYE. Um, for some reason, it said it wasn't for sale at Best Buy, and then they had it anyway. But it's Hostel 3, which, you know, they're not putting out on Blu-ray, which they probably will down the line. So I'm not sure if I, ever, if I even open this, and I'll just sell this off when the Blu-ray comes out. Because it sounds like they probably will at some point. Um, what, what annoys me, though, is they put it up on streaming and stuff in HD. So, they're, I don't know. But um, the cinematographer on this um, did the shot the film I did them in for sci-fi called Haunted High. So that was pretty cool. But um, the movie's basically Hostel in Vegas. It's not as cool as the first two Hostel movies. I really didn't hate it, though. It's basically a group of these sort of... It almost has like a very bad things kind of vibe. The group of people that go to Vegas and they're going there for a bachelor party and, you know, basically they end up in the Hostel situation and, you know, it, it, there's not a whole lot to say. It's basically like gamblers betting on how the person's going to kill the people. Like, is he going to use the saw to kill him? Is he going to use the pickaxe to kill him? Is he, are they going to die in a minute? So they're basically p placing bets. They're behind glass watching the killer, you know, the c person who paid to kill him. So it's, 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 it's interesting. Nothing amazing. I did like how they opened the movie, kind of making it look like it took place. Like, you know, thinking it was in a, um, somewhere in, like, Romania, and then you find out it's just in Vegas. And it was an interesting opening, and pretty well done. I wish they had a little bit more, like, with casinos and stuff in it, though. This one is a pretty bad movie, but I, I liked it. Called, um, The Open Door. And it says not rated. I think, a trailer online said it's PG-13. But I think they said the F word too many times for it to be PG-13. So I don't know what it's rated. Not, it's not very violent or anything. It's kind of a little tameish, but it wasn't horrible. It's basically about this. Um, the acting in it was a little bad. The mother, I was like, ooh, the mom in this, like the way she was talking, reminded me like, like if they made a new troll, they'd have to put her in it. But um, this, you know, is about the group of these kids and this one girl, and like her friends are always like kind of picking on her, or talking about her behind her back. And the kids are all talking about this pirate radio station where, you know, if you call in and you talk to, like, the prophet or something, every your wish comes true. And the one girl basically couldn't go to a um, party because she was out past her curfew, you know, by, like, an hour. And the parents are like, no, you can't go. You have to learn your lesson. You can't go. You can't get everything you want. And, like, basically, then the boy she wanted to see, the one friend texts a picture of the boy kissing some other girl when he didn't, like, all this kind of crap. So then she calls up 
the prophet on the radio station. She ends up finding it. She's like, I want my friends to like me. I want my friends to stop talking about me behind my back. I want Kyle to like me. I want, I want, I want to feel his dying breath when I'm holding his hands. And it's, it's just really cheesy. But then basically all the friends end up getting possessed and killed and all. It, it was fun. It's a really bad piece of crap but fun movie that I, I did like and would be one that I'd watch again down the line. It's like a bad movie that was fun. And this one is a movie I really haven't watched it in years, but I really liked it. And it's been hard. They don't really, it's weird. I've only ever seen it for sale used on Amazon, and I don't know what happened. They don't have a new version of it. Hopefully they put out a Blu-ray in America. There's one in Germany of it, which at some point I'll get. It's one of Viggo Mortensen's, like, I think, might be one of his first movies, I think called The Reflecting Skin, and it's one that's really creepy, weird movie with really good score in it, and it's about this weird kid, and there's all this weird stuff, and this weird neighbor who's like a vampire, and these weird kids, and it's just all this weird stuff. You can't even explain it. It's all peculiarness, but look at the trailer online. It's very good. The last one I got is the Women in Prison set. I only got it for the Chained Heat because I wanted to get more Linda Blair movies after watching that Sweet Hostage. I didn't like that Red Heat very much. and I didn't watch this Jungle Warriors thing. Chained Heat, though, is a really good women in prison movie. And um, the one woman, um, Sybil Danning, because I don't think I'd ever seen her in any movies before. So that was like, I'd seen her in the um, Grindhouse um, trailer, but I'd never actually watched any of her movies. She's not was not bad at all. Um, I don't know, really well done. It had really good synth music. The synth music kind of reminded me a little bit of Heartbeats, which is not even a horror movie. But it, it reminded me, if anyone's seen Heartbeats and they've seen this, it had a really similar vibe to it. This is a really cool one, though. The other ones aren't great, though. I only bought it for $16 for that, though. Anyway, though, um, that's all I got in this update. I'll probably do another one in a couple weeks. Just have to see what comes out to show. Anyway, though, thanks a lot for watching, for subscribing. Hopefully you guys didn't hate this setting. Tried to do something a little different so you could see me a little bit better. I'll, like I said, I'll do it in the DVD room as well still, but I'm just sort of trying to shake it up a little bit. Anyway, though, thanks a lot for watching, for subscribing. And um, yeah, also, too, I heard something about on YouTube. There's going to be like, a, you know, if your subscribers change all of a sudden, YouTube is doing something where they're getting rid of all the inactive accounts. I just heard about this today. So, like, I know my subscribers is going to go down. I, I'm sure a lot of people's will. It'd be interesting to see because it's going to take out, like, all the fake accounts and all that kind of stuff. I just, like, heard about this, and like, an hour ago. Anyway, though, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys later.